So today we are focusing on uh, the ecosystem digital transformation. So basically we have uh, so far uh, been discussing um, a lot from starting from <clears throat> the startup development phases and uh, startup development uh, framework as well as then the key elements and terminology of the of the ecosystem and moving slowly towards the, the digital infrastructures and uh, data specifically looking from the the key elements of data from measuring the ecosystem measuring the startup progress and and so forth but today we will we will touch again of course some of those topics because we need to connect all of these things together uh, but today we will focus on digital transformation so uh, of course the, the whole digital aspect is a, is a broad topic and uh, and there is no uh, business in the in the world pretty much that it wouldn't uh, touch at some point whether it's already happening, whether it's already very far, or if it's heading to that industry, um, and, and or geographic for that matter. Uh, so it was just a few days ago, Elon Musk tweeted the first time using the his own built new satellite internet thing that brings, that is planned to bring internet everywhere in the world, the fast broadband internet wirelessly through satellites everywhere. So it's like starts to be very few places where there wouldn't be affordable access to that. But anyway, so uh, and, and when we talk about digital transformation, we of course need to also understand what that, that uh, more broadly uh, translates into. So we cover that topic from from that perspective as well. So welcome everyone for for the for the third module and, and let's get going. So some of the key topics uh, for today are uh, getting more deeper into. Uh, we discussed uh, a lot about the, the KPIs as one of the key data elements uh, that everyone can relate to why they are important and. Uh, and, and then we look more deeply in how to actually uh, go about uh, looking into how that collection uh, is happening and, and how it can be incentivized. <clears throat> we talk about the digital transformation, we look at the ecosystem architectures more closely. Also, we take a much deeper dive into softwares and data and solutions, so we go uh, further in the technical terminology and language, we look at the ecosystem level user accounts that are key factor in bringing the, the um, ecosystem level user experience, improving that, uh, improving the, 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 the progress measures of individuals and startups within the ecosystem. Uh, we discuss and, and build understanding around data models. Uh, and then we look at some ecosystem um, application concepts or so existing applications and solutions where uh, the type of infrastructure that we've been discussing about uh, building a data infrastructure to connect applications versus looking at applications as their own individual silos, what type of applications then that brings uh, and then also from individual support function perspective, what types of uh, uh, existing or new applications there there may be that are very interesting from the uh, from the perspective of data collection and data availability. So we look at some existing ones. We look at some where there is a long history experience, and then we look also some of the future uh, looking conceptual uh, models as well. And then uh, we also have the sustainability topic, uh, but that starts to already translate to module four. So, so we may not uh, have enough time to, to touch on that. But uh, if we do, we can then look at the sustainability um, um, 
kind of a, 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 an opening for that, uh, but we'll take a deeper dive in the module four. Okay, so uh, once more, I'm I'm about to lock in, but I think uh, at this point, all of the the, the participants uh, have already taken part on the previous ones, uh, so I'm not going to dive any more deeper to that, but. I guess if you want to tweet something about what you learned today, then feel free to do so. There's the Twitter handle. Uh, so maybe you can take it from that aspect this time. So <clears throat> let's dive into the, the data collection uh, aspect. So uh, the key element really to, to understand uh, what we are also going to focus a lot today is to uh, build better understanding of what like the, what of what those applications and how how do we unbundle uh, softwares uh, to better understanding because it's a key part for for all the digital transformation to occur. Um, so, but regardless, the the key point that we also established previously was the point that uh, basically software is the, just the features; it makes things happen. It's the the, the tool that brings automation, but data is then the, the, the real thing that captures all of that value that uh, the software features and functionalities provide in a reusable, uh, distributable, transferable, portable, replicatable, adjustable uh, format. So, so while it, the features do something to improve a process or function in a business, uh, data is then the, the the, the value and uh, and in most places when we think about it um, like CRM systems for example it's nothing more like like a log of putting information in like you know in a, in our own secret place that we know is valuable and we can go there and we can look at it and, and we can find and then we can share it with our colleagues the interactions we have had with customers and so forth but it's really like the software has function as a place to put that value in and extract that value out. But what, what the key part to understand that that value really has a lot of other values, specifically when it's shared with others, when it's looked at from a different perspective or when it's reorganized or when it's combined with something else. And uh, so data has uh, a lot more different value than just the value that, that typically uh, the process that is around in the form of software is created for. So really understanding that that uh, data is the value of the software. It can, it's easier to think if you have, you know, like a project management software and there wouldn't be any projects in there. You would have a CRM software, there's no records there. Then you, you really understand that the software itself is pretty low value. Um, in, in, in without having that data. Of course, it provides that process support, but but uh, but empty software is pretty pretty clear indication of where's the value. All right, so let's look at the data value chain and how the data kind of comes to life uh, from the perspective when when not not looking from the, the perspective of you know recording information I enter something and then you look at that something but when we extract that value out of the system or multiple systems uh, how does that happen so so the data it, it starts from the data acquisition so that can also, of course be also like research data that we look for something specifically uh, but regardless we pull it from one or multiple sources we then need to prepare that data in some useful format, uh, meaning that we need to kind of make sure that it's clean, that uh, overlapping data elements are merged. Uh, so if we have two or three systems so that it comes together, then we can uh, do some analysis from that so we can find insights from, from that. Uh, and then uh, there's data modeling that we can structure, we can restructure that data for different new uh, use its purposes. Um, uh, it can be merged from multiple pro places and restructured in a new shape and then that can be used 
in different ways. Typically, the visualization goes along with the analysis. So when we look at just, you know, imagine a spreadsheet full of data, it's not really compelling. It's not really telling easily. So we need uh, visualizations to bring the charts and you know, different views into that data. And the most popular ones, of course, in the context of startup ecosystems or startups is infographics. So even to very simple data, uh, when you bring uh, like consumer level uh, design on top of that, you can really make uh, simple data to be very uh, impactful and very communicative. So when you imagine that uh, taking data analysis and putting it in a <clears throat> really consumer level consumable format like dynamic infographics, you start to understand how powerful uh, the data visualization can be. And then of course there's further distribution, so when we open it, uh, either fully open or permission based data, so someone gets access but it's technically connected, but you need to ask permission to access it and then someone can grant that. Um, and then this whole model needs to be deployed and it needs to be maintained uh, uh, for, for, for that to continue functioning. And, and then with data, uh, we can also start building automation. So when we have data, information changes, we can then, uh, or new information enters, we can then create software triggers that create uh, new types of act actions and functions. Uh, in, in any kind of application. So, so this is kind of the, the, the general uh, model of, of how we can think of data and, uh, and, and what, what is really the, the part where we apply this uh, and, and where's the quickest place to start thinking of, uh, of applying that and building the automation on top of is when you think the most common activities at ecosystem level that happen today, uh, which are uh, ecosystem mapping. So collecting basic information about organization and doing that manual process. So almost with the same cost, like, like, like genuinely, almost with the same cost and time that it takes to do that manual mapping exercise once can a, this type of a technical setup be deployed uh, at the same time? So think of it at the same time, with same timeline and almost with the same cost. You can, instead of doing one ecosystem mapping, you can do the mapping, deploy a, a technical solution and have constantly repeatable solution to repeat that process automatically as many times as you like, as often as you like, as dynamically as you like, build automation out of that. And, um, and that's really um, the level of, of uh, uh, separation between when we talk about uh, the, the, the business operational side of people working uh, in the, their own silo and then we talk about technology people and software people not connected into that manual process uh, where we miss the opportunity so instead of having you know 10 people team that are all uh, non-technical people uh, or more doing the manual collection instead having you know uh, five business side people and five uh, technology people to do the same process but in a way that it gets done but also technology gets implemented at the same time so that's that's the the the, the type of uh, thing so either doing it fully manually the same process or doing the process and applying technology or software applications at the same time 